Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk about the general solution theory for differential equations. And indeed in today's part 27 we will write down all possible solutions of a second order linear ODE. This will be not so much work because we can use everything we have done up until now. In particular part 26 will be really helpful because there we completely solve the linear system of dimension 2. However, as always, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, as a member you have access to every video and to a lot of additional material. And with that out of the way, we can immediately start with our topic of today, which is about the general linear ODE of order 2. And as before, we keep it simple by just looking at the autonomous case and also just at the homogeneous part. And this implies that we can easily write down the general case of such an ODE. It's the second derivative of x plus a1 times the first derivative of x. And then we also have plus a0 times the function itself. And in the homogeneous case, this is just equal to 0. And this is all, this is our one dimensional ODE of second order. So you could say the only thing that goes in are the two coefficients a0 and a1 which should be real numbers. And at this point you should already know that we can equivalently reformulate that into a two dimensional ODE of first order. This is quite simple, we just say that y1 represents our original function x and y2 should represent the first derivative of x, so x dot. And then we can just use a vector with two components, namely y1 and y2. And then we take the first derivative, so I put a dot on the top, and the result is a matrix vector multiplication. So indeed, we always get a linear system out. And the matrix A that is involved is quite easy to write down, because in the first row we just have 0 and 1, because the derivative of y1 is simply y2. And moreover, the second row is given by the original ODE, so minus a0 and minus a1. This is also easy to see, because we just have to bring these two terms to the right hand side. So the whole result is a two dimensional system with a real matrix A. And there we can immediately use the result from the last video, which tells us that two-dimensional linear systems are fully understood. More concretely, we can distinguish four different cases and then we can find all the solutions. And in order to formulate these solutions, we need two things. First, the eigenvalues of A and second, the corresponding eigenvectors. This means, on the one hand, we have to calculate the zeros of the characteristic polynomial and on the other hand, we have to look at the non-zero elements of the corresponding eigenspaces. And as a quick reminder, the eigenspace is given as the kernel of A minus lambda times the identity matrix. And there please note, in the case that lambda is not an eigenvalue of A, then this kernel is trivial, so it only contains the zero vector. And maybe on the left hand side we can also write down the characteristic polynomial, which we call PA of lambda. And this one we already discussed a lot, you can just use the original ODE to immediately write it down. So we have lambda squared plus a1 times lambda plus a0. And there we want to find the solutions if we set it equal to 0. However, as mentioned before, we also know the eigenvalues of a if we know all the kernels here on the right hand side. So let's see in which cases we find non-zero elements of this kernel. So this means we take our matrix A and then we subtract lambda on the diagonal. Hence we have minus lambda here in the first entry and minus A1 minus lambda in the last one. And if we multiply this by a vector W1 and W2, then we want to get out the zero vector. So this is what it means that the vector W lies in the kernel of this matrix. So what we actually have are two equations and three unknowns. And in fact, the first row gives us an equation which is immediately important. It's minus lambda times w1 plus w2 is equal to zero. 
And this is important because it directly tells us that an eigenvector always has to satisfy that the first component is non-zero. If it was zero, then the equation tells us that w2 is also equal to zero. However, the zero vector itself can never be an eigenvector. So this is a result we can immediately fix for the rest of the video. And in addition, we also see that we can just scale our eigenvector such that the first component is equal to one. Therefore, we can assume without loss of generality that our eigenvector w has in the first component a one. However, this immediately implies something for the second component because we already have this equation here. Indeed, w2 has to be equal to our unknown scalar lambda. And now these two things we can just put into our matrix vector product and you see it looks much simpler now. And please recall what we actually want to have is the zero vector as an outcome. However, here on the right hand side, we can expand our matrix vector multiplication to see the result. The first equation was already solved before, so there we get our zero. But the second equation is a little bit longer because there we have minus a zero, minus a one times lambda, minus lambda squared. And this is all, and there you should recognize that this is exactly minus the characteristic polynomial. So there we have it, we have zero and minus pa of lambda. So this means if lambda is an eigenvalue, then this whole equation here is equal to the zero vector, and therefore one lambda is also an eigenvector for this eigenvalue. So let's state this as our first result, eigenvalue implies eigenvector. This is really nice because we have the form of the eigenvector which we need for our solution of the ODE. However, you should note that we can also read the equation the other way around, which means if we have this vector as an eigenvector, then we get out the zero vector, which then implies in the last row that the characteristic polynomial has a zero at this lambda. Therefore, the implication also works the other way around so we have an equivalence here. And most importantly, the only other eigenvectors we can get for our given eigenvalue are the scaled versions of this vector. So the calculation also shows that the corresponding eigenspace is always just one dimensional. This is a very important fact when we look at the four cases which we had for the two dimensional ODE system. So as a reminder, let's write them down again and we call them 1a, 1b, 2a, and 2b. As you might remember, for the case a1 and a b, we had two different eigenvalues for the matrix A. The only difference was in the one case we had the eigenvalues in the real numbers, and in the other case we didn't have them in the real numbers. So we had proper complex numbers for the two eigenvalues. And obviously, in both cases, the two eigenspaces have to be one-dimensional each. In contrast to that, the cases 2a and 2b only had one eigenvalue for the matrix A. And there we could distinguish either A is still diagonalizable or it's not. And indeed, not being diagonalizable means that the corresponding eigenspace is only one dimensional. So in conclusion, this 2a case can actually not happen for our second order linear ODE. So you can remember, this case cannot happen because our matrix A has a special form in this case. In fact, this makes it a little bit simpler for us because we only need to use the solution formulas for three cases now. And with that, we have all possible solutions of our ODE of second order. Let's start with 1a, where we have two eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. And corresponding to them, we can choose two eigenvectors and let's call them u1 and u2. And now, as we have learned in the last video, the whole solution space is spanned by these two vectors. However, please don't forget, this was the solution space for the two-dimensional system. For our second order one-dimensional ODE, we just need to take the first component. This was the transformation we had at the beginning. We defined y1 as being x. So this means we can just cut the vectors we get from our two-dimensional system and just look at the first component. 
However, since the first component of the eigenvectors is always one, we immediately have our solution here. In fact, the whole solution space is just spanned by two exponential functions. So in the case we have two real eigenvalues, every solution of this O to E is a linear combination of these two functions. So this is a really nice result. And then we can immediately go to the second case where we don't have the eigenvalues in the real numbers, but we still have two. And as you can recall from the last video, in this case, the sine and the cosine function come in. In addition, in this case, you should recall that the two eigenvalues can be written with two real numbers, alpha and beta. And then what we get in this case are two solution vectors, which both have e to the power t alpha in and the cosine of beta t and the sine of beta t. And as already mentioned, also in this case, we only look at the first component of these two vectors. And there you should know that u is the real part of the eigenvector and v the imaginary part. And since we fix the first component of an eigenvector as one, we don't have an imaginary part at all. So this makes everything quite simple. The first function has the cosine function and the second function has the sine function. And that's it. The solution space in this case is just spanned by these two functions. And there you see, one particular case would be that alpha is equal to zero, and then we just have the cosine function and the sine function for the solution space. Okay, with that we already reached the final case, that is the one where we only have one eigenvalue. We already know we are not diagonalizable in this case, so we only have one eigenvector, or one eigenvector direction. And you already know the substitution for the missing eigenvector is the Jordan normal form where we choose a generalized eigenvector. And then what we got is that the solution space is spanned by the exponential functions again. And the first one is the normal one with just the eigenvector u1. And the second solution vector has a factor t involved, but also our generalized eigenvector u2. However, as before, the good thing is we only need the first component of both solution vectors. And since the eigenvector has a one in the first component, we just have the exponential function. And the second function looks similar, but there we have the factor t as well in front of the exponential function. Actually, there we also would have to add the exponential function that comes from the generalized eigenvector as well. But because this one is exactly the same as the first one, we don't need it in our linear combination. Hence, it does not matter at all what this generalized eigenvector is, because the solution goes in the same direction as the first solution anyway. So we know the solution space is spanned by these two vectors. And there we have it. This is the whole result. Now you can solve every general linear ODE, which is autonomous of second order. You just have to calculate the zeros of the characteristic polynomial and check in which case you are. And then you immediately know the two solutions that span the whole solution space. And by having the whole solution space, you can definitely solve every initial value problem. Okay, so I think this is good enough for today. Let's meet in the next video and have a nice day. Bye bye.